Welcome to this video tutorial on how to create spherical panoramas in V-Ray for Rhino. Spherical panoramas can be used to create virtual reality environments for use within VR goggles or virtual reality apps for your phone or for your desktop. And in this tutorial we'll be going through how you can render out still images of these spherical environments and then import them into this software to create this effect. Now for this example I'm using this forest scene here and we're using V-Ray's scatter tools to scatter some trees, some grass assets here and a couple of kind of logs and other bits of woodland sort of assets on this surface here. Now currently you've only can see a preview of these objects as we're using V-Ray scatter plugin for this. And if you want details on how to use V-Ray Scatter, I've done a separate video which I'll put a link in the description so you can see how to use that as well. Now, what I've done is I've set up a camera in the center of this forest object called Perspective here. And if we just open up our asset editor and do a quick test render of this, you can see what that scene currently looks like. So there you can see as it loads up, this is currently what the scene looks like from this standard camera point of view. Now this is just a fixed perspective camera. We haven't got our spherical scene yet. And in order to set up a spherical render so we can render a full 360 environment of our scene, we'll need to change a few settings within our V-Ray Asset Editor. Now these are found if we minimize this tab, go to the settings, and under camera you can see there's set to type, it's set currently to standard. Now this is just your standard perspective camera. If we want to render out a spherical panorama, we can click on the standard option and just set it to V-Ray spherical panorama there. Now when you do so, you'll see that the render output is set to two to one and you want to keep it at a two to one ratio for this. And you also want to make the output resolution quite high because when you're stretching to a panorama, when it will kind of condense down into the sort of image which you'll be able to see through your VR goggles or software, it will kind of take a portion of that panorama and show that sort of bit by bit. So you need to make sure the kind of overall panorama is quite large to allow you to then kind of crop in for your particular viewing of that panorama. Um, I'd recommend anywhere from 3000 up to 6000, but bear in mind the higher this number, the longer it will take to render out. And once you've set that render output and make sure it's on V-Ray Spherical Panorama, we can then just do a test render to see how that looks. And we'll just let that load up. Now here you can see the render preview of that is loading and you'll see that it's kind of slightly warped image. On the edges, we've got a kind of slightly warped feature there. And essentially what it's doing is it's rendering a 360 view from our fixed point to our camera is located to give us that sort of spherical surrounding from our scene. It will look like certain areas are warped, but once we sort of save this and load it into our software to start to edit this image, you'll then see that it will kind of compress and be viewed as a normal kind of perspective view that we can then spin around and view sort of in virtual reality. Now it might be useful when you're doing this if you want to edit it afterwards to make sure you set up some render elements as well. I've got a sort of raw light and a raw refraction and reflection render element set up as well in this scene to allow me to kind of edit that in post-production and we're going to be using Photoshop to edit this. So once you're happy with your render, all we need to do is just go to the save all image channels to separate files option here. If we click on that, it will then ask us to save the file, find the file you want to save it, give the image a name, I'm just going to call these number one, and you can save it as a PNG or a JPEG file, or kind of whatever file type you feel is necessary, usually JPEG is fine for this, and then just hit save. Once you have those files saved, you may want to do some editing to those images before you upload them to your VR viewer. Now, my image is quite dark here, so I kind of want to brighten it up slightly and just adjust the colors a little bit in this image. I've also saved some of the passes and render elements from this, and we've got the raw light here, which we can use to brighten up some of the lighting in that image. Now, in order to edit this, I'm gonna be using Photoshop, and all I'm gonna do is just go to File, Scripts, and Load Files into Stack to essentially load all of these render elements into one Photoshop file. 
So we can just select them all like so, hit OK and load them in. And this would just load in those four separate files into one Photoshop file for me to edit. I can then just move my top layer, my rendered layer to the top. And then if I want to overlay that raw light, I can move that above. And I'm going to just put that on a color dodge and lower the fill color there just to brighten up some of the areas. And you can see it kind of working there as well. I think in addition to that, I'm also going to use an exposure just to brighten up the whole image as well because it's a little bit dark. Now, often the darkness, it might look dark in when it's unfolded like this, but when you view it through a VR viewer, it will look brighter because it won't be kind of as expansive as this image here because some parts are going to be warped so they look bigger than they will actually appear. So once you've got the kind of light values correct, you might want to adjust some of the colors. I'm also just going to apply a quick filter on the top, just going to filter and we're going to use this oil paint just to give it a little stylized look on the top there. And if it's coming out a bit strong, I'm just going to lower that down slightly to a sort of 35. And once you're happy, I'm just going to save that out, file, save as, and just save it as a JPEG version just as an edited version, and we'll call it edit for now. Now, before this can work in a kind of VR viewing piece of software, we need to make sure that it's formatted correctly to work with these particular pieces of software. Now, we can also do that in Photoshop, and to do that, we need to open up the file as a panoramic file so it reads appropriately when we bring it into a new piece of software. An option for this can be found under the 3D tab in Photoshop. And if we go down to Spherical Panorama, we can click on Import Panorama here. There I can select my edited version of this image, hit Open, and it will ask you kind of how you want this to be set up. These aspect ratios are fine for how we rendered it, so I'm just going to hit OK. And here you can see it's now imported it as a spherical version, and we can actually pan around it and I'm just holding the left mouse button and just scrolling through the image. We can look up, we can look down, and here you can see how the image works as a spherical panorama. So here we get a sense of how it will look in a sort of VR piece of software there. Now, once I'm happy with that, all we need to then do is just go back up to 3D, spherical panorama, and hit export panorama. And we're just going to save it back in the same file and we're just going to call it edit VR. So I know that this is the one that's been exported for VR use. Now, once that's saved, you'll see it looks exactly the same as the previous version. And if we just look at it on the kind of photo viewer on Windows, it won't look any different. But by going through that process, the VR version will now be ready for use within a VR reading piece of software. Now, there are multiple viewers and VR viewers you can find. Some are online, some you can download as programs on your computer, some you can use on your phone. The easiest and most accessible one of these is actually Google Photos, and that's the one I'm going to use for this particular example here. To find this, all you need to do is type in Google Photos into Google, and if you have a Google account, it will open up this version of your Google Drive. Then all you need to do is find that version, that VR version of your image you've got, drag and drop it into Google Photo. It would take some time to upload it onto the source. And Google Photo has a built-in VR viewer and you can tell that with this little kind of spherical icon that will come in on the image. If we then click on our image, it will automatically load it in that VR viewer and you can then pan around and view it in virtual reality like so. Now this can also be viewed on the phone and all you need to do is click on the share option. You can create a link and you can share it with multiple people as well. So that could be viewed on a tablet, on a phone or any other device that you want. So that was just a quick tutorial on how to create a spherical panorama and use it within VR software on your desktop or mobile device. Thank you for watching this tutorial and if you want any other videos on rendering in V-Ray and Rhino, please check out the videos on the channel.